Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we discuss the poetry of Samuel Taylor Coleridge with a specific reference to his well-known poem Kubla Khan. We will see certain elements associated with the history and the literary context, some bits of information about his life. We will focus on his fascination with two concepts, fancy and imagination. We will provide some background information about the historical character Kubla Khan and the poem. Then we will see the images and imagination in this poem. We will offer an analysis and then give two readings. One is called a sonic reading, another is called a new historicist reading. Let us see the historical and literary context. Two kings ruled England at this time. One is King George III from 1760 to 1820 and next King George IV from 1820 to 1830. It was an age of social, economic, political and literary revolutions. One is American revolution, another is French revolution and this French revolution had much impact on British society. We have this philosopher William Godwin who came out with this anarchic philosophy, a sense of chaos, he did not want to have any order in society. Then we find that Robert Sadi and Coleridge had good friendship between the two and in fact they wanted to come up with one idea called Pantisocracy where everyone would be equal but it, it was not realized though they tried to have one society like this in America. What we need to understand is the friendship between Wordsworth and Coleridge which actually brought about this great revolution in literature, in British literature, the romantic movement. One interesting case of De Quincey and uh, Coleridge's use of opium we can see. Coleridge and De Quincey we are often taking this opium for relieving themselves from pain and also for exploring their own mind. We notice a major feature of this period particularly with reference to Coleridge that is literary theory was developing from one level to another. Wordsworth came up with his preface, Coleridge wrote his Biographia Literaria, Ray wrote many essays. Similarly, Lamb also wrote many essays on Shakespeare and other writers. Now let us see the kind of poet we have in Coleridge. He was born in 1772 and died in 1834. He was a poet and critic with a philosophical bent of mind that is important because he could not succeed more as a poet but he was able to retain his status as a critic. He was known for his opium addiction, heavy drinking and quarrels with Saudi and Wordsworth. He was noted for his friendship with Wordsworth resulting in the publication of lyrical ballads with four poems including the rhyme of the ancient mariner. He developed his own theory of poetic imagination and a key concept called willing suspension of disbelief in his masterpiece Biographia Literaria. He believed in the organic and unified form of poetry. He is considered a giant in English letters if not poetry. His best poems are Kubla Khan, Cristobal and Frost at Midnight. For our sake we will see the first poem Kubla Khan. Coleridge attempted to distinguish between fancy and imagination on the one hand, primary imagination and secondary imagination on the other hand. For Coleridge, Fancy is essentially a memory. It deals with the logical organization of data without synthesis. Fancy is a mechanical operation of the mind to bring things together for creating images without any kind of fusion. For him, it is not a, actually a creative process. In contrast, imagination is a synthetic process. 
it actually shapes the whole mind that is why he calls it the shaping spirit of imagination. When it comes to imagination he differentiates between primary imagination which is all about perception of the world common to all beings all human beings and secondary imagination which is specific to poets who shape the world and also create new worlds in their poetry. This kind of distinction is important for us to understand poetry and also the poetic character of people who write poems. So, anybody who writes poems will have to have this secondary imagination only then they can write great poetry. Many great poets have had it that is why they are very successful. The historical character Kubla Khan lived in 13th century from 1215 to 1294. He was known as a cruel despot and the grandson of Genghis Khan, but Coleridge is not concerned with the cruelty of this king. He is more concerned with the pleasure dome that he built in Zanadu. Coleridge learnt about this Kubla Khan and the pleasure dome from Samuel Pachas who was a traveler who had seen this and described this. Similarly, Coleridge had access to Marco Polo's description of Kubla Khan's marble palace. As we said earlier, Coleridge is more interested in the beauty of this dome rather than the cruelty of the king. Now, let us have a brief background to this poem. This was written around 1797 and published in 1816. The original title of the poem is like this Kubla Khan or a vision in a dream a fragment. This poem is considered to be a fragment like many other romantic poems. This poem appeared as a vision during his drug induced sleep. Actually he had read this book Pachasi's pilgrimage and that had some influence on him. He had a dream in which he saw some 200 to 300 lines all images rose up before him as things as he was writing down something happened somebody knocked at the door he responded that is why we have only 54 lines now. The critics also point out that at the beginning we have some good poetry at the end there is a difference that is why we have some disparity in tone and effect a gift at the beginning and a loss at the end. This is a considered to be a poem about the composition of poetry which deals with the principle of romantic analogy between mind and nature. We have given a reference here for us to understand more about the creative process in this particular poem. Now, let us see this uh, poem Kubla Khan section 1. In Zanadu did Kubla Khan a stately pleasure doom decree where out the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man down to a sunless sea so twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girdled round and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills where blossomed many an incense bearing tree and here were forests ancient as the hills. Kubla Khan 2 Enfolding sunny spots of greenery but oh that deep romantic chasm which slanted down the green hill athwart a sudden cover a savage place as holy and enchanted as ever beneath a waning moon was haunted by woman wailing for a demon lover and from this chasm with ceaseless turmoil seething as if this earth in fast thick pants were breathing a mighty fountain momently was forced. Section 2 continues amid whose swift half intermittent burst huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hall or chaffy grain beneath the thrushes flail and mid these dancing rocks at once and ever it flung up momently the sacred river five miles meandering with a mazy motion through wood and dale the sacred river ran then reached the caverns measureless to man and sank in tumult to a lifeless ocean and mid this tumult Kubla heard from far ancestral voices prophesying war. Kubla Khan section 3. The shadow of the doom of pleasure floated midway on the waves where was heard the mingled measure from the fountain and the caves. It was a miracle of rare device a sunny pleasure dome with caves of ice. Section 4. 
a damsel with a dulcimer in a vision once I saw. It was an Abyssinian maid and on her dulcimer she played singing of Mount Abora. Could I revive within me her sympathy and song to such a deep delight it would win me. Section 5 that with music loud and long I would build that doom in air, that sunny doom, those caves of ice and all who heard should see them there and all should cry beware, beware his flashing eyes, his floating hair, weave a circle round him thrice and close your eyes with holy dread for he on honey dew hath fed and drunk the milk of paradise. These 54 lines create an image of this pleasure doom in Zanadu built by Kubla Khan as a symbol of this creative process in which Coleridge has seen many images of creativity. First let us see the thematic contrast between the east and the west. Kubla Khan is from China, the poet Coleridge is from the west. We have both pleasure and pain, stately and ordinary things sacred and profane, fertile and sterile, ancient and modern, sunny and dark, deep and shallow, waning and waxing, woman and man, wailing and laughing, fragment and whole, motion and stillness and the most important theme life and death, war and peace, vision and reality, delight and misery. Finally, we have both paradise and hell in this poem. A number of poetic devices make this poem a great one. We have this great symbol of pleasure doom further added by this river alp and song and most importantly imagination. Hyperbaton we have in the first two lines in Zanadu did Kubla Khan a stately pleasure doom decree. We have assonance and alliteration in line number 6. So twice 5 miles of fertile ground and similarly in line number 21, huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail, assonance and alliteration in line number 25, 5 miles meandering with the amazing motion. This is considered to be one of the best lines in this poem, 5 miles meandering with the amazing motion, some kind of incantatory effect we can feel from this kind of line in this poem. We have of course a paradox, a sunny pleasure doom with caves of ice, sunny pleasure doom with caves of ice, ice and sunny together coming make this uh, paradox. We have of course this conceit of connecting this Abyssinian maid and her song with this pleasure doom. This doom evokes this song from this Abyssinian maid in Coleridge. We have of course some rhyme, rhythm and meter in this poem. It has a complex rhyme. Sometimes we have I rhyme as we see in the case of far and war. We also have varied end rhymes, decree, sea, tree, three examples together and then rills and hills, rills and hills making a pair. We have some couplets as well in ran, man, round and ground and as we can see the rhythm is varied tri, tetra and penta, all these three meters come together in this poem. We have iambic trimeter in line number 5 down to a sunless sea. Then we have iambic tetrameter in line number 1 in Zanadu did Kubla Khan. Then iambic pentameter we have in line number 11, enfolding sunny spots of greenery. We have a peculiar case of n deca syllabo, it has 11 syllables actually. The example is, but oh the deep romantic chasm which slanted. Then the meter we have in this poem is iambic generally, but there are many variations and that is why this is called polymetrical. We also have some question about this form, is it a ballad, is it an ode, is it a lyric? We have all these together in this poem, that is why it is a strange poem, it is an extraordinary poem. On the whole, we can say Kubla Khan is a powerful visionary poem presented through a series of vivid images about the stately doom, the process of imagination and the creative self of Coleridge the poet. The sacred river Alf meanders through a fertile garden and caverns to reach the ocean. 
the sedan covered that means it is a forest the sedan covered romantic chasm under the waning moon has a wailing woman and an erupting fountain. The doom appears like a miracle of rare device for the poet. It reminds a poet of an Abyssinian singing maid that once he had in his vision. This vision is a milk of paradise for the poet to cherish forever and we cherish this milk of paradise as readers of English poetry. We have certain images like Kubla Khan, the pleasure dome, the river, the caverns, the fountains, the underground sea and these images represent two kinds of imagination, primary imagination and secondary imagination. For primary imagination, we have this example of the fountain, this is a perception, this anybody can see, but the secondary imagination that we see in this poem is essentially vital for the poet and for creative process. The critics have considered the river as an example of this secondary imagination. This reconciles various opposites, dark and light, east and west, good and bad, war and peace, it reconciles everything. Probably we can say it reconciles primary and secondary imagination as well. We have a curious case of a sonic reading of this poem by Jones, sonic refers to sound. The prosody of Kubla Khan is notoriously problematic as we saw iambic tetrameter, trimeter, pentameter all together. So one question raised by critics is this, what is the meter used in this poem? Is it trimeter, tetrameter, pentameter or polymeter? Another question is, is there any uniformity even in this polymetrical system? We have these questions because Coleridge was an experimental poet, especially he experimented with different kinds of meter. Coleridge uses ballad type meter, pentameter and also endeca syllabo and 11 syllable line that is an Italian meter in this poem. A critic called Ben Glasner calls the meter of this poem polymetrical. Jones argues that the metrical ambiguities in Kubla Khan have their functions to add a charming and chanting quality to this poem. As we read, we can feel that charm and chanting quality of this poem. An interesting case of a new historicist reading we have in a critic called Khan. He has looked at various dimensions like the personal context, the scientific context, the political context, the orientalist context, the Euro-American connections in this poem. The personal context is about staying in a farmhouse that is Coleridge staying in a farmhouse near Pollock and Linton and walking with William and Dorothy Wordsworth uh, one day. We also have to understand that romantic poets generally have belief in this pantheism that is nature, the whole of nature is considered to be God. The scientific context is the publication of books on earth that is to do with geology. Thomas Burnett published his book Sacred Theory of the Earth in 1681 and another book by James Hutton called Theory of the Earth came out in 1785. Coleridge also had friendship with the scientist, famous scientist Sir Humphrey Davy. So some element of the science or scientific perception of nature comes into this context. Then the political context deals with the French Revolution, Napoleon coming into power. So some kind of resemblance between Kubla Khan and Napoleon is hinted at and this is considered to be a pro-Napoleonic poem. The oriental context is of course to do with the mixing of the east and the west, China and Mongolia on the one hand, Abyssinia and Epo Ethiopia on the other hand. We have these two in contrast with the British preoccupation with the East in general for trade, for many other things. The Euro-American connection also we can see in terms of the four warnings, the cautions of war, prophesying war in this poem. Then we can see that Kubla Khan is the Eastern other that tells us about the rise and fall of various civilizations. It is just a poem of 54 lines, but we can see a larger context for this poem and understand it from a new historicist perspective. 
to sum up, we have seen the historical and literary context in which Coleridge wrote his poems and his critical treatises distinguishing between fancy and imagination. Once he was attracted to this story of Kubla Khan, he wanted to write a poem and so he came out with this poem in his dream and he had more than 200 lines, but when he wrote the poem he was able to write only 54. We have certain images for primary imagination and secondary imagination in this poem. Some critics have offered a sonic reading and also a new historicist reading. Of course, there are many other readings we can see in some references here. Thank you.